Uh, good evening. This is Fari Hamzi. It's 5.05 p.m. on Tuesday, the 13th of June, 2023. It's a great pleasure to be here presenting to you the work that Peter Cook has done. Uh, very briefly, all of our webinars are recorded. That's for your protection and us. As a, a newsletter writer to PMT, I have to. I have no other choice. has to be recorded uh, because I can't give one-on-one -on -one advice. It's going to be where everybody else is. Whether it's uh, you know open or is it for a fee, it has to be somewhere it's recorded and everybody else present. As always, we record them right after the close of the webinar. It takes about 50% of the time, 60% of the time used for the webinar to get post-processed, then we post it here. Our YouTube channel and goes here. Okay. One thing you could do is subscribe with your Gmail. Very easy. This way, you don't have to wait for any emails. The moment it's posted, you get it. Tomorrow we we'll do our PMT, but today we're doing our uh, this is a special webinar. All of our webinars are posted here, and usually on the uh, for the stock market uh, timing webinar, which is the PMT, I do a little housekeeping uh, comments. That one you register once because they repeat every week. These other ones are special. The reason we're doing these two is simple. We have a gap in our documentation and uh, our videos. That's how we. That's how we briefly train you. That's how we briefly introduce to what we do uh, on what we're doing. So, and then there were other issues that came up that were requested. For example, nation indices that cash likes. I'm a big, uh, I have a big interest in gamma and uh, uh, open, uh, open interest. Thus, I thought we'd do two. One this week, one next week. Next one week, I'll do about ORP. Uh, and then this is done with OTF, the technology right before it, and then, uh, you know, his specialty. So without further ado, let me bring Peter up uh, on, on, on his end. Uh, Peter has been with us, I think, four or five, maybe maybe even longer, maybe six years. Hey, Caesar, welcome. Uh, with us, I, at least four, maybe five, anyhow. Uh, very eclectic trader, reads that ferociously. Uh, he is he, one of the, I think, probably the best moderator we've had in our chat rooms. Uh, he's far more knowledgeable even than me. I'm very focused on a couple of areas. He's very eclectic and he's very good in analyzing issues. Uh, a lot of price and volume work. Um, uh, you're gonna see, you're gonna get a feel about that. So, we're very pleased to have him. Uh, Peter, all yours. Go ahead, sir. All right. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Quick audio check so, for Peter. You guys can hear audio, Peter. You can yeah, hear quick. Be able to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, Robbie. All right, yeah, as Fari said, uh, my name is Peter. I've been with Fari for a couple of years now, just observing and downloading all the OTF information. Uh, watching Fari day trade and uh, developing my own style. Uh, so hopefully today you're going to hear a little bit about that and you can get uh, at least one nugget that's going to help you day trade and uh, I don't know, just be a better trader. So my story, I was an engineer for about 15 years, uh, decided I was tired of it and got out and then started trading and floundered for a long time got better and better and better and better and better and better and uh now it's where i am so i probably spent ten thousand hours or more looking at charts for the last probably four or five years so uh, i pretty much eat leave and live and breathe markets so without any uh further ado i'm going to talk probably 15 or 20 minutes about otf probably talk another five about uh, some of the gamma strikes or spot gamma and stuff like that and how it fits in. And then a little bit about nations indices and alternatives to VIX uh, because the uh, last six months or so, it's been a little wonky trying to use the VIX in the way that a lot of people have tried to use it traditionally. So uh, what I'll do is I'll jump on the charts here and uh, we'll talk a little bit about day trading. So you should be able to see my cursor uh, and this chart that you see here 
is a little bit busy from left to right. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time uh, describing every single little bit that's involved with it. Uh, Fari's got lots of videos that explain exactly what it is, but the high to low level is that each one of these panes from XL all the way to medium describes a certain class and size of blocks traded uh, in the market. So you can imagine over here, these are big blocks. Down over here, these are much, much smaller. All right, and so you can kind of see that this dip here, right there, would correspond with this dip right here. So you get more and more zoomed in as you go left to right. All right, so if we're day trading, and we're trying to understand the, the, the big thing that I kind of find with people uh, is they, they can struggle oftentimes with should I be going long, should I be going short? Uh, and it helps to have a bias when you come in to the market on the day. And you can accomplish that in a couple different ways, but I'll show you a little way that I use often uh, that works pretty good. Uh, and so if we're coming in today and we want to talk about should we be going long, should we be going short, or what? Uh, this is just a daily graph. So these are just bars that show dailies. And uh, this one on the bottom is just the percent R1. This is just the Larry Williams percent R indicator. Uh, it's been around for a long time. And when you put it with a one period uh, look back, all it describes is where the close is in relation to the entire range for the day. So why is that important? Well, it's important because there is a bias on the dailies that you need to understand if you're gonna day trade. And it's a very strong bias and it's something that's super important. Uh, and it's the tendency for a down day to be, be followed by an up day. And it's a tendency for an up day to be followed by a down day. And it's also a tendency for the close in the range to be very important. So if it's a down day and you finish at the bottom of the range, then it's very bullish usually for the next day. So in TradeStation, you can back test that. So what I've done here is what you can see here is closes that finish in the bottom of the range. Here's a day, here's a day, uh, this is a day right here. This is the next day's open. So every day the close finishes in the bottom of the range. The indicator like that shows it. And you can see the next day I have a strategy program. So if I go into the strategy, I'll show you guys. Edit strategies. It's a little bit hard for me to see it this far away. You can see the way that I have it set up. It's just the percent R less than 10. So closing in the bottom 10% of the range, and then we'll hold it for two days. So that tells you like, if I got, if I recognize that I had a day where it was in the bottom of the range, well, the next day I might be more inclined to want to day trade from the long side. And what does that give you for the next two days if, if you do that every day? This is what your equity curve looks like when you do that, okay? This is 20 years. So it does have some periods where it's rough, like bear markets, right? but in general, it's up and to the right. So let me make sure I can minimize that. So that's, that, that is much better than just random, okay? Now, the other thing about something like this is when you look at it, how often does that happen? So let's look. It's about a third of the time, All right? So one out of every three days or so, and you would be in the you would be in the market for those next couple of days, and that's just a rote mechanical thing. And if you want to know what happens when you close at the top of the range, let's do that. So let's 
So if we are greater than 90, what happens? All right. So you can see that as well. So that is basically zero, right? There's really no, all right. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I have a question for you. Don't you want to also yeah. change the exit? Only change the entry. Hold on a minute. My uh, my any desk is giving me fits. Okay, hold See on. if it'll. Uh... There you go. I just. Did it work? Uh, yeah, I just... said something about a license limitation, but. I have no idea. It's, yeah. it, it, we so, we use any index all day. Yeah. But... So it, it doesn't well matter. So, but net net, it's basically zero. And I didn't change the exit, but I can change the exit. So, so don't you want that's to? That's just two days. Because you're just shorting, right? You're shorting one. Yeah, you would short one and you just hold for two days, but it's just showing that right. you're not really making any money. I understand. But yeah, I'm saying that your uh, conditions, I thought for the exit, don't you have to? Oh, oh I see. You're just waiting two days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All I'm trying to say is, is there's a huge upward bias in the market. Right. If you get a close at the bottom of the range. Okay. And if gotcha. you want to short, it's oftentimes better to do that when the close is at the top of the range, because usually the next two days are flat. I see. So you got a pretty good shot at not swimming up against the current. Mm -hmm. And so if you did that and you tied it to like, let's say the, let's try that. Like if you just said, I'm only going to do this. Oh, I need to add some data here. Oh, you need to change your look back? Yeah, I just needed to add some bars to it. Yeah, you gotcha. Because I picked 200 days. Yes. And I'll turn it back on. So, there we go. So now you're just shorting the same conditions, but it's under the 200 day. Mm, okay. Moving average. Right, right. right. Now, you definitely have a downward buy. Yeah. So that's just a two day hold under the 200 day with a close at the top of the range. So, how often does that happen? Not often. About 11% of the time. Mm. And I'll tell you, for me, I'm shorting significantly less than I'm going along, mm -hmm. especially if we're over the 200 a day. And especially if we close in the bottom of the range. Mm -hmm. So those are two little tools you can use to kind of give yourself a bias and say, okay, there should be some days where I don't need to be touching this thing from the long side. Or there should be some days where I don't need to be touching this thing from the short side. So today would be, right, look at, Let's, let's look at today. Look how overbought it is. Right? I'm going, oh, it just keeps going up. And I'll tell you, for me, I was short now. And it wasn't working. <laughs> but that doesn't mean it was a bad idea. Right. Uh, That's true. So let's go back to the fractals here and say, okay, we have a bias. And let's, I'm just say I'll show you what the way that I was trading it today. And my typical setups, when I figure out, hey, I have a bias, I'm going to go long or I'm going to go short, or it looks like it's a day on framed by the dailies, you know, that looks like it was going to have an upside bias. And there are a lot of other ways besides just the percent R that you can define the bias or you can find an edge on the on the dailies. Usually it's the same stuff that you might think of if it's really oversold, it might come back up, stuff like that. Three days down in a row, that that's a good one. So what you would do 
when you have that bias is you're going to come here to the OTF charts. And so for me, I trade here on the mediums and I trade here on the XL. I pay attention to the XL plus and I really don't use the large for very much. So the mediums are where I would execute my trades. And so these charts have a few different things uh, kind of on them just so that you can tell where overbought and oversold is. And you can see that we have a momentum indicator down here on the bottom. This is far as uh, CI. And you can see that it has a histogram. So immediately your eyes are probably drawn here to this long where it turns up and it goes up. And then you get out like right here. Nothing like that when you saw red, like a red histogram for a good trade. Uh, so for me, I, I would like to frame this kind of trade. And my trades are pretty simple. I'm going to be getting in when I see that first green histogram bar. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be getting out usually when I see these magenta dots, which correspond to high levels of the histogram. So we want to be catching the top tick of that so we can get good fills on, on our exits, et cetera. And so it's pretty simple, the execution of the trades. You're waiting for crosses up and you're waiting for overbought levels. And if you never get overbought levels, you'd be waiting for crosses down. Now that seems pretty simple. It's a lot harder to do in practice than, than, than you think. So in this particular case, this trade, I would have framed it over here on Excel. So I would say I'm interested in going long, especially if I get oversold here. And those dots right here tell me I'm oversold. In addition, I'm next to these bands. This big band up at the top that's more solidly colored is a three sigma band. And you know you don't get down into this level very, very often. And so you're, pre you're pretty oversold down here. So when I see XL oversold, like here, like here, I'd be inclined to take a long from this perspective on mediums. Now, today, I had a short bias just because the market was really, really overbought. But what I was doing today, let's say from the short side, this right here, I shorted that. This right here, I'm shorting that right now, and it's, I'm not winning. But these were areas where this trade is framed for you and you can take and try to short it, right? And so let's talk a little bit about what's in the middle here. So it's in the middle here are a few different things. It's a three minute chart. And this chart most closely corresponds to this XL. They match pretty, pretty close. This right here runs up and this runs up here. Where this is hugely beneficial is when price doesn't change a whole lot, like overnight. Like if they don't do anything overnight and it just goes flat for an hour and a half, this is not gonna print new bars just because there's no activity, right? This one's gonna print a bunch of bars and they're all gonna be sideways. So, and which can mess with the indicators. But most of the time during the day, they match up pretty well. And this one, obviously, over here on Excel, you can time the turns a little quicker. By, so, the, way, you, by the way, you have a question from uh, Ravi. I can read it to you. It says, what if you don't get a magenta? What if you don't get a magenta? So I want to say you're long and you don't have a magenta. You know. Yeah, for the exit. Let's say, you know. let's I assume, do I assume we're talking about this magenta. magenta. Yeah. Here's one that doesn't get a magenta right here. Yeah. So like if you wanted to go long here. You're either you're 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 just gonna be long when you get the first green bar, mm -hmm. and then you're out if you see a red one, mm -hmm. and you say what why? Well, 
because it controls your win to loss ratio. Mm -hmm. So how are, how are you gonna be able to control it otherwise? You could set a stop, which I, a lot of people do. So a lot of people will say, okay, I'll wait for this turn up right here. And say it's right here. They'll put their stop underneath here. And then at that point in time, the other thing you have to be like really diligent with is at least getting this much on the trade. And if you want to be successful, you need to get this much and then some. Because a one to one win to win to loss ratio oftentimes makes day trading tough because you have to be right often. And being right often in day trading can sometimes be a challenge. Uh, like for most of my trades, I'm right like maybe 60, 65% of the time when things are going well. Things aren't going well, I'm right maybe 45, 50% of the time. And I'm taking paper cuts and a draw down, right? So you definitely need to make sure you use something that gives you correct win to loss ratio. And then you work on picking your spots based on edge. Like, so like if you got these dots, you know there's edge there because you can see it. You can see the, the, the pivots, right? You, you work on picking your spots to make your accuracy go up. And it's very important to have the right combination of accuracy and a win to loss ratio. That's called expectancy. And if that number is not high enough, you're not gonna make the money. So in my case, if I take it, I don't get a magenta and it comes back down and it's red, I'm gonna get out. Now, there are caveats to that. If you're trading very small, let's just say you, you, you wanna catch a bottom that's moving really hard to the downside and you're kind of not sure when it's gonna stop. Well, you can enter oftentimes, you know, one third, one third, one third. So you might take a cross up and it fails, boom. Okay, you're stuck in it. But the next cross up, you enter your second position. And if you get a third one, which in my opinion is rarer, you could enter a third position, you know, you could enter a third position and then you'd have all three there and then you'd be waiting for the next turn up. So that's a way to scale in as well. Um, so let's talk about this middle pane and what some of this stuff represents and some of the setups that I, at least that I use. So this is where we're gonna talk about for the first time levels. So here up until now, it's just wrote, find the dots and pick the turns. That's it, that's all there is. And get out when you see these dots or get out when the thing turns back down. That's it. At this point in time, we'll talk a little bit about the MBS here, which is the white line, the VWAP, which is the blue line. And everybody probably trades using the VWAP and it's good, uh, but I think the MBS is better um, and it gives us a good idea where you can see here over here on Excel, uh, some places where it's bounced oftentimes. So does it bounce every time? No, but it bounces a whole lot more than random. And that's the point. And the trade that I like to take oftentimes would be a trade where we get the DMZ, which is this right here. This is a longer term momentum indicator. I like to watch it turn up and have a trend change. And I like to take a pullback, just the first one, into the DMZ and push up. So this is a little baby version of it. Most of the time I like to get it a little bit more extended and pull back down. Oftentimes it will push into these stars and get magenta and pull back. But this is an okay example. Uh, by, so, by the way, by no, Peter, you can expand that page if you want, this pen like this. 
Yeah, sure. Let's do that. There we yeah, go. There we go. Yeah. Because you so, can see throughout the day what happened. Yeah. So you can see what happened throughout the day. So it was a sideways day. We didn't get a whole lot in terms of trend. Uh, we'd love to use this method if there if we knew there was going to be a trend day. And how do we know that? Well, I just we went through the percent R situation, you know, earlier. And you say, oh, well, if I had yesterday, we had a close in the bottom of the range, three days down, something like that. I'd be ready to go on if there was a DMZ cross up and then a pull back down. Okay. So in this case, we got this, this cross up. And at this point in time, we knew that the DMZ was crossing up down here. It had turned green and we said, okay, we got the lines are up. And the other thing we got here is these bars turn purple. These bars are just set up to turn purple if we get outside of the bands. So they turn blue if they're outside of the bands at the downside and purple if they're outside of the bands on the north. And you can see price often turns sideways or turns down right afterwards. And so at this point in time, we're ready for what might be a trend move to the upside because DMZ just shifted direction. And this is the very first pullback after that. And that is the trade I like to take. So that would be going back over here. And let's find out what time that was. Could, could I add one item there just verbally? Yeah. Okay. These uh, crosses that you see below and above, these are fear levels, these are greed levels. Greed versus fear. If you look at it here, you'll see we cycle back and forth. One second. We constantly cycle back and forth. Fear and greed, fear and greed, why? 49 to one leverage, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not a stock buy, it's a futures, moves fast. So you, you always one group is in trouble. There's a one group is in max pain, it creates this. How is it computed? It's ATR, the volatility-based measure over uh, over the uh, DMZ bands, the green versus red. And look how this oscillates. Green is always on top, even though there's a cross. And these calculate those bands. That's why they're so accurate. And you could see when there's a separation, we're returning, we're reversing. You get a separation here. You went run up as it's hitting it, you can't touch it. Once it creates a separation, it starts dropping, you're going to the other side. That's all. Yeah. And you can also see with these indicators, the colors change. So the, the bars here are notifying you. Be on notice for a trend change. Down here, you've got the CI that turns green, right? And everything's changing colors here, telling you to be ready for the trend change back up. Now, in this case, if you wanted to take a long, you could take that and you probably would expect to be done here if you're trading with levels, right? So like if I took a long and I wanted to ride it up here, I'd be gone by the time it hit this MBS level. So let's see uh, over here what that looked like over here, this little long that I was just describing, the first pullback after a DMZ trend change. So the DMZ trend change, first pullback, and this was like one, 356, let's look at that. Let's see if I can open this up. There we go. So that would be... That's right here, I think. So this push up here and this right here, and there's your trend chain right here. Now, what did it do? You could have taken it, you would have stopped out. Now you take it and one, and now you're still right. Well, you probably were stopped out right there. But you missed one and you got the second one. Right. So that would be how I would play that. It, you know, it's the long side. And this is a good segue, probably. Well, let's talk about this down here. This right here is a three minute chart, very similar to this three minute chart, 
but it's just the day session. So you're going to have this gray line both for the 24 hour future session, and you're going to have it for just the day session. So there's two VWAPs and there's two MBSs. And that can get confusing, but you need to keep track of both of them because sometimes price will turn at one or the other. And so that would be levels that I use to trade against. Super simple, very easy to see, and uh, they work. And the other thing you can do is just use this MBS to trade against. You don't have to worry about whether or not the trend's changing or anything like that. So uh, and that's the case, you can just go back over here and every time it taps it, which is it gets close right here, you can trade that. Every time it comes down here, it's gonna tap it. Whoop, it going under. You may or may not choose to check, take that one. This one here, you'd probably wanna take. So you can trade it that way. Just if, if price comes down and taps it. So what I like to do, is trade the first one or two taps. So like if I know the trend's up and it's not here, but but if the trend was going up and I came up over MBS and I came down and tapped it, there's one, this might be two and I'm out, but I might not take three. It just depends on the day, but you can trade every single one of the taps if you want to. Um, there's certainly edge there. So, that's another setup. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, maybe this is a good segue because we're talking levels uh, to talk a little bit about maybe gamma and then we can maybe do weekly. So let's do weekly and monthly and quarterly VWAPs. I'll make a new one. I, I forgot to make this earlier. But if you ever want to know the uh, weekly or monthly v VWAPs, let's just do 30 minutes. I keep a 30 minute chart. There we go. Take a couple years with the data. There's an indicator in Trader Trade Station. Uh, it's a moving average. And I've said this to some of the folks in the in the room, but it's it says it's moving average volume weighted. Whoops, right here. And you can use this to put together like a monthly or yearly um, VWAP on the futures. I mean, get the right timing here. So, whoops. Make sure I'm still controlling it. That's not what I wanted. So, come on, buddy. The time, the time frame. I like to use median price, which is just the middle of the bars. Uh, make sure I type that in right. Yeah, and I think thirty-one twenty is one. Oops. Oops. So if you have a boom, let's try to zoom it. There we go. I can pinch it. That's what I want to do. So there's a one of the VWAPs that I like to use. I think that's a yearly, if I'm not mistaken. And that's a seven times two. 
Oops. Let's do. Oh. Bear with me. Yes, I think. So if you guys can see it. Um, maybe how you drive the 3120 is the issue. Uh, it should be six and a half hours in a day times. Uh, 252? Uh, yeah, 252. Should be so if there's three minute bars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I came in with uh, 1638. Yeah, there you go. Let me make sure it's, I'm going to do the quarterly. I know it's 780. So there's 780 uh, 30 minute bars in a core. And you can see this This would be areas where quarterly view up. Mm -mm -mm. I see. Wow. And let's do monthly and weekly. Those are most important. I'm going to do monthly at 26. There's 260. Uh, I can add another one. Let's do it. Do we on top of each other? Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good idea. Whoops. Mm, no, 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 that wasn't. There on there. Just need to edit. Studies. Customize. And you can use the close too. It the medium price doesn't really make a big difference. Okay. Gotcha. And then you got the shorter one there is the one that's more, more responsive is going to be monthly. Mm -hmm. All right. Stops. There we go. And there's a weekly one you can use, and that one's 65. All right, five days in a week. Uh, times six and a half hours in a day. All right, that would be 13, yeah. 32 half, 32.50. And I'll just put the, I'm just gonna, actually, I'm gonna keep this. And I'm going to put the weekly. I'm just going to put the weekly in the month. I don't have to worry about the quarter. So, uh, change the color. Yep, good idea. So, when I'm trading, I'm keeping track of these levels on a half hour bars so if you're looking at the month please these would be areas i'd be taking longs i'd be taking longs mm -hmm. i'd be taking longs and oftentimes the monthly and the weekly this monthly and this weekly are the two that matter the most for day trading mm -hmm. but when we were in the bear market we were wiggling around the quarterly ones and even the yearly ones so you can use this indicator, keep a half hour chart, and these are excellent levels to trade against. And you can keep it for NQ, you can keep it for uh, ES, and they work very, very well. And I like to use them on the day, the day session, because it's easier to compute, you know, how many bars, and obviously they look pretty clean. And here's a big gap, you know, and you wonder why? Well, that's because it gapped through a big old VWAP. Mm -hmm. So uh, those will be more levels. So like when we're talking about over here trading, I might cancel on this far. I don't right. want it to be yeah, like correct. That. Yes, sure. So if it ever hit one of those levels on that 30 minute chart and I knew it, it was coming up on it, I might be inclined to play it to the upside as well, you know, as far as levels go. Okay. So those are basically some, some setups. And let's talk a little bit about something that's not necessarily trade station. And let's go to there's the there's the website. So 
when we're talking about gamma and options levels, uh, I'll forward everybody to uh, a blog post by a guy named, I think his name's Sergi Perl Perfilative. I don't know, he's got a Twitter account anyway. Uh, but he's got a pretty good, this is the address to it. But if you Google his name and how to calculate gamma exposure, like this is how I figured it out. So I wanted to know, like, how do, how do these fancy websites do this? Well, what you can do is you can download the entire options chain from SIBO, okay? And you go over here, the SIBO, and it's just the delayed quotes, and you can do it at the end of the day. And what you get is a file that's going to have all of the information for the calls and the puts. Okay. And you take that file and you can put it into Excel. And he tells you how to do it. It's not super important. But what you end up getting is calculations for the actual gamma for every option involved in the entire chain mm -hmm. for SPY, or SPX, NDX, NQ. And so, hold on, I'm going to give you guys just two seconds. He wants to try. My dog just came home. She's barking. <laughs> All right, she's good. So, you can see that you can make a graph. And you assume one thing. You assume the puts have negative gamma. You assume the calls have positive gamma. That is a rote assumption. It is not true for everything. It is not exactly how market makers hedge, but it's how 90% of it's done. And the way that you do this is summing up every strike and the gamma associated with it. And again, you can go to this website and download a little Excel file and do it yourself it's really not that hard it's like two columns you have to do an excel sheet and you make this graph now it, you have probably seen this graph if you've day traded or done options or listened to any of these guys like a spot gamma or whatever uh, and we'll talk about spot gamma in a second but what i want to say is there's a level in the market right here and it's a level where there is zero gamma. And it changes every day. It doesn't change a lot unless there's a big move. But, and it doesn't change that much really week to week. But it does change. And you need to be aware of it. And it is a level that you use just like MBS. So if you knew this level, you could put it on your charts. And this one, it looks like it's, I don't know, 4,000, 4, something like that. Hard for me to see. 4,500. Uh, 4, yeah, 3,500. This is an older one. There you go. No, 4,500. No, 4,500. So, 4, oh, 4,500. Yeah, this must have been when we were right at the top. So if you know that level, what does it mean? It just means if the market's been going down towards it, it's probably going to stop for a while at that level. That is a level where market makers are going to kind of cease hedging activity. And they're going to look and see what the heck's going on. So if it's been going down into it, people have been buying lots of puts. Market makers have to short the futures as soon as they get an order for a put most of the time. Then they might stop doing that because they get at a gamma level that says, hey, time out. The, the analogy I use is like when the ball goes into the air and gets thrown up and it's almost at the point of coming down, but it's still going up too. So it's got one direction. And for that little bit of time, it's suspended in the air, almost doing nothing. That's, that's like a zero gamma level. Now, that's one level that you can keep track of and you can calculate it yourself. Uh, but there are services that'll do that, and uh, I, I think they're value-added. 
because it's kind of a bunch of work to do this for SPY and NQ and SPX and NDX. So the other thing you get is not just the zero gamma level. You can see here there's two spikes on this graph. And those change not super often, but they change usually around OPEX or around big events. Like at the end of the month, every quarter when JP Morgan rebalances one of their funds and then a whole bunch of uh, options change positioning. They roll a call spread, I think, up or down, and then you have a put spread that goes with it too. That happens every quarter, and it's a big fund, and it keeps getting bigger, and it's something you have to keep track of. But you could do that with this. So when you calculate the gamma, again, all you gotta do is download the, the options chain and fill in the, the columns of the, the data with the formulas that Sergey gives you here. And you have these numbers, these spikes down here tell you that there's a whole lot of options positioning associated with puts there. So do you think market makers want that price to be exceeded on the downside? No, not at all. They're, they're not going to pay these people to the left of this big spike. It's just not going to happen. I mean, not, not, not often, put it that way. Same is true with a big spike here on the call side. And I'll give you one guess as to where you think we are in SPY or SPX right now. <laughs> we're right here today, at least. We're, we're up here where all the calls are sitting and we're getting close to options expiration on Friday. Um, so it is going to be difficult for it to keep just running over this unless this moves to the right. It's always a moving target every day. Right. So if people decide they want to buy more calls at a higher strike, and then it becomes the new spike with the most gamma, that is going to drag the market up. That will drag the market up every time. And so this, this, this fence that we play in, this spike and this spike, that's, that's the range, usually for the week, if not for the month. That's the sandbox. And anything in between, you can see. Now, when you have these smaller spikes, like here, there's a little baby spike. That is a level of support and resistance you can use. And so these levels with discrete strikes are often support or resistance. They would be used just like you would using MBS. And so instead of just calculating all this manually for ourselves, there are services that do it, right? Spot Gamma is one. So Spot Gamma, these, I mean, this, they're not paying me. I don't, you know, I don't have any affiliation with these guys or anything. And just, I've just seen people use the product. I've, I've seen the levels myself and, and they work pretty good. So they'll tell you SPX, SPY, NDX, Q's, Russell, IWM, and they'll tell you where the highest gamma is, absolute. So that would be adding the puts and the calls together. They will tell you where all the call gamma is. So like this is a call wall, and it tells you what it is. There you go. So that would be, you know, analogous to our big spike up here. That would be the call wall. And I call it a wall because it's gonna be hard to get over, right? And so we can see today, 435 on SPY, 4400 on SPX. Where are we at? Where are we at? Right. So same thing for NDX and, and, and the Qs. So we can use those levels to trade against. And we would do that. How would we do that? We could go over here. And you, you don't have to. Um, um, what's the right word? Uh, keep looking back and forth at the levels, right? So, like, if you wanted to add, add an indicator to your charts, Tra TradeStation has one where you can uh, like custom, I think, four lines. So, like, if you wanted to put some of these levels, like, I think there was one that was, if we added these to our chart. 
I think I'm on ES. Uh, what was it 4,400? I think is what it was. Oh, I see. Should. Uh, I'll just add a few. 4,000. Oh, I'll go back and get the real numbers. Uh, let's say. Uh, You can add this to your chart. There you go. There you go. Uh, there you go. Uh, did it do it right? Yeah, I think it did it right. You did it right. Yeah, I think so. Yes, yeah, it's all right. It's on the right axis. Okay. For some reason, I thought it told, gave me, it told me it wasn't you know, nope. the right thing, mm -hmm. but it didn't. Anyway, so like if we went and saw what the levels were today, they were uh, 415 or 4,400, and zero gamma was, uh, let's say, 4218.8. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put those. Those would be levels that we would use. I already got 4,000. Four right. I'll just do this for the line eight too. Anyway, so those would be levels that we would use. I think it's got not doing it right, but. Either way, that's how I would add those levels to my chart, and that's how I would use them. And a lot of people use those levels, and they work good, in my opinion. Uh, so that that's gamma, and how to calculate it, and, and what it means, and what it does. Uh, let's see here. The last thing we want to talk a little bit about, uh, nations indices. So we can talk a little bit about what those guys are. All right, so the nation's indices, there's this guy named Scott Nations. He's a market maker for a long time. And uh, he got fed up with how the VIX was calculated and didn't think it was right. And he wanted to make something that was more logical or I don't know what the story is. Mm -hmm. But he has a whole host of indices um that you can download this is the website right here and you can actually get it for you can he gives the data away so i could you can open the excel file um and it's got quite a few it's daily a, totals it's um, on this side one second let me bring it to you one sec oh sure yeah there, there you go there you go and any uh, 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 things so all your perfect there we go yep so he's got daily totals for a few different indices. And there's three big ones, Volley, SDEX, which is SKU, and TDEX, which is a tail hedge index. He also has a call DEX, a put DEX, a risk DEX, which is just the relationship between the, the call DEX and the put DEX. I think the SDEX and the put DEX, sorry. So uh, he also has a host of seven day indices. So if anybody knows anything about VIX, there's VIX, but there's also VIX for the short term. So like, let's say like, I think 30 days or less. I don't remember what it is. There's a medium term, which is like 60 days. And there's a longer term one, which is like six months. It all has to do with the way that they calculate it, you know, over what time horizon. He's got some seven day numbers, which are good for short term trading. I haven't back tested these because TradeStation only has the 30 day indices, Volley, SDEX, and TDEX. So let's go to TradeStation and look at those so that you can see what those look like. Uh, a little more to the left. A little more to the left. Two more, two more. Two more. Yeah, to the right. One more to the right. There you go, Nations. Oh, did I? Oh. Nations, I got it. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Yeah, I got to squint to see it. That's my computer's problem. No worries. Okay. So uh, here we go with the, the TDEX, you can see here. And 
the S dex, the skew, and then the volley. So the kind of the thing that you might notice about these indices, look at the volley. This is very, very close to VIX. What is the difference? VIX has calculations that are basically surrounded around the, almost the entire option chain, right? Mm -hmm. And they take into account all the strikes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Volley is taking into account only the strikes that are near the money. So he's ignoring anybody buying like an option that's for crash protection. Right. Like, you know, like 20 delta or 10 delta puts or whatever. He's only interested in what's going on at the money. Which is basically is what the original, which is basically what original VIX was before. Yes. From Dr. Whaley before Steve went in there and played with it. Yes. Yeah, maybe, gotcha. So if he's interested in looking at only options at the money, mm -hmm. you can naturally think about well, what would happen if you made a VIX of only the options that were way out of the money. And that's what TDEX is. Oh, so I see. Look at what Volley's done. Down, 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 down. But look at what TDEX has done. Up, 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 up. So what does that tell us? That tells us people are buying puts that are out of the money. They're they're hoarding them. They're going out and look at look at these spikes. And it and they're they're ahead of event releases, right? Right, right, like CPI, or FOMC. You can see they're not that interested in the at the money stuff, but they're interested in the cheap stuff, right. probably because it's cheap. Um, so how would you use that? So I can, I'll show you one of the one of the things that I use TDEX for, and I find it now to be better, uh, a better indicator of uh, panic than the VIX is. So we go and we look at dailies and I add a symbol. I look at TDEX. All right. And then I'm going to add an indicator and pretty simple. Rate of change. Uh, which input? The first uh, time series or second? Uh, I'm going to do it on the second. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I'm looking for one day spikes in the oh, TDEX. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh -huh. We're going to do this. Zoom it out. I'll add some more data. Right. So, let's do maybe four years. Ten years. Well, ten years. Okay. I think it was like ten years. Earlier. Wow. Let's so we can. Wow. Look at that. Uh, now uh, I'm going to add VIX. Let's do that. Why don't we add VIX? I'll zoom it in okay. to show you. The difference between the way VIX is behaving, I'm going to zoom this in now. I'm going to get that code spike out of the way. Gotcha. And I'm going to add a, a rate of change for that too, so that you guys can see. After June 2022, what happened to the VIX? It was broke. Oh, 2022, last year. Yeah. Gotcha. Let's do one, 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 put this in there, one, and let's do X. So you can see here, you get a spike, pretty big spike in TDEX, pretty big spike in VIX. Look what happened during this bear market. These spikes are going nowhere. Mm -hmm. After June 2022 is broken, mm -hmm. it doesn't spike anymore. Mm -hmm. Guess what does? TDEX. Mm -hmm. 
So if you're looking for signals where you used to use like VIX and you look for a VIX spike, which is a good signal for a market bottom, mm -hmm. you should swap to TDEX, in my opinion, mm -hmm. because this is contaminated a little bit with the zero DTE stuff. Right, right. Um, <laughs> and it is suppressing the VIX, yeah, in no my opinion. There. Yeah. <laughs> there's no signal there anymore. Uh, yeah. And this is also when the 10 year interest rate really hit 3% and stayed. Mm -hmm. I'm of the opinion that the row changed on a lot of options and the way that people changed moved into shorter dated mm -hmm. and inverse ETFs, whereas they may have picked weekly or monthly options to hedge before June 2020, when that would be when interest rates were lower and options were cheaper. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to spend the same amount of money on insurance to hedge and the prices went up, you got to pick a different, cheaper, shorter dated range, different product like an inverse ETF. And so this is also, I don't have the data, but I've seen it before. After June, 2022, if you've ever looked at shares outstanding on inverse ETFs, they're through the roof. So you've got a lot more people using them. So if you want a cleaner signal, PDEX. And if you want a good like line in the sand, Mm -hmm. A forty-five percent spike in one day, right there. Gotcha. And you darn good shot at the bottom. And this right here was when the regional banks were blowing up. And I saw that spike, and I said, "I think we're done. I think people are panicked already." People said, "Oh, the VIX isn't high. Look, it's not even spiking." So, well, mm -hmm. look at the TDEX. It's gone nuts. Mm -hmm. So they bought the puts, the crash protection on the puts. Mm -hmm. And uh, and look here, look, here. look how running? much this is going running? up. Yeah, as the market was going up, and we had that two-day burp here that just got ripped to the upside. Well, look what happened. The TDEX is crushed, and that's what happens because <laughs> people are having to cover their hedges that that didn't work. That did not work. And that's where we're riding right now. Just short covering. That's all this is right now. And we're getting extreme with it. So anyway, that's my whole spiel. Um, hopefully you found that useful. Hopefully you got some information you didn't have before. Hopefully there's a nugget or two in there that, that uh, will help you. Uh, folks, any questions for Peter? I don't have any. I got to study this. This is way, this is a tsunami here for me. I'm glad I recorded it. Hey, Ralph. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Ralph. Anybody else, guys? Any questions? Of course, this is being recorded. We'll post it immediately. And yeah, uh, I'm in the chat room every day talking about stuff like this. And then usually at the end of the day, or if I take trades for swings or whatever, I'll post those as well. And um, I'm just sitting there trading all day. So. Good. Yeah, Peter is awesome. Peter is absolutely awesome. And, and he does it with such an ease. And you would think it's that simple. It's not. It's just that he's experienced and he's gone through this many, many, many times. So, Peter, thank you so much. We appreciate uh, all you've done for HA. Really. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Uh, you've done great and we appreciate that. And always, always available to help and uh, you know, hold our hands and walk us across the bridge. We appreciate it. Guys, I'm going to close the webinar. Well, there's lots to study. You bet you. Yes, I agree. And we'll see you tomorrow in the chat room. Those of you who want to join the chat room, you're welcome to. We'll give you one week free. Just send me an email. And uh, first name, last name, and phone number. We will never call you. But if the email is bouncing, we have to. And then we'll get you in for a week of uh, uh, in the chat room with us. Okay? Thank you so much. This concludes our webinar tonight. Bye now.